Okay, so what we're going to do, going to do today is uh, reflection and transmission, but, and, and there's good physics here, so it's not just, uh, you know, problem solving, but not normal incidents, not where it's coming exactly perpendicular, so oblique. is coming out of the board, board so that x cross y is z. Um, so this is the interface, so this is medium one, and this is medium two. Now draw a picture, and slowly the picture will be justified along the way. Uh, it, it, it looks like a cartoon picture now, but that's not true. This is entirely correct, okay? So you might have some incoming plane waves, but it's coming you know, I'm not drawing all the uh, k vectors. It's everywhere here. But I'm just going to pick one sample one and think of it as a laser beam, so to speak. Yeah. So I have one. And let me draw this one. And then cut this off at some point. I have k incidence. And this angle, I will refer to as theta i, the incident angle. The angle is taken always with, in this um, formalism with respect to the normal. Yeah, this is the normal line because this is the, the xy plane is the interface between the two mediums. And then we're going to, and with the anticipation of a correct answer, And you, you see, I'm, I'm slightly cheating because I'm picking in, uh, incidence angle and reflected angle to be the same. But we know it is, but it, all of this has to be justified. And then from here, I get a transmission. And this is theta t. So as we set up the problem, this is what we have to keep in mind, okay? Now remember, these electric fields are complex, so they should have tildes on top of it, but I'm not going to pick tildes. At the end, um, if there's a minus sign, you know it's, you, we take the absolute value and uh, take the minus sign into the phase factor, okay? But sometimes, if I remember to, I'll put the tilde as well. So let me write out the expression, and, and this is only heavy algebraically. We have, we have done all the calculus we, we want. So I have an incoming uh, I have some amplitude vector. It's com a complex, and e to the i ki dot r minus omega t. I'm, for the first time, uh, you know, towards the end of the second semester, I will slightly deviate from the notation in the textbook. But I think this brings it, brings, it it's, clarifies things in great detail. And so, because it's a plane wave, if there's a time-dependent electric field, there's a magnetic field, and we know what it is, it is one over, V1, excuse me, and K incident cross, that's what it is for any plane wave. <coughs> and this is in medium one, so it's V1, whatever. It could be air. You know, air and water is a good one to think of, and water and air for the other way around. And the stories pretty much the same. If it is going from air, uh, water to air, you will get uh, uh, the electric field is out of phase. Yeah? <coughs> and similarly, you have three expressions for the electric field and the uh, magnetic field. Um, 
so you would have a reflected. We won't put the uh, minus sign. We will just put it as K R. So the minus signs will be learned to include directly. Yeah. Okay, fine. And then, so, and, and this part Griffith, uh, Griffiths does nicely. So let me write out the, the boundary conditions. We, we had talked about this er, earlier, um, the boundary conditions. So let's, let's not um, dwell on it too much. Uh, each, it, it, the boundary condition is going to be um, the electric field on one side with epsilon 1. Oops. Uh, epsilon r equal to, oh, I'll do it component by component. So first, the normal component, that is z. The normal component, d is continuous, or epsilon times e is continuous. So we get epsilon 2, e 0 transmitted, the z component. Yeah. The parallel component of the electric field is continuous. So the normal component of the d field is continuous. The electric field, uh, parallel component, so e 0 i plus e 0 r, the parallel components are x and y. So I should put x comma y. That's equal to e 0 t, the x or y component. Okay. Now, the normal component of b is continuous because um, divergence of b is 0. And so you get, again, B complex zero I plus B zero R Z is equal to B zero transmitted Z. And the last one is uh, the tangential component of H is continuous because there are no free currents. So tangential is 1 over mu 1 and then B. B 0 I plus B 0 R incident and reflected on one side and the transmitted on the other side. This is mu 2, mu 1, mu 2. B zero transmitted, and this is the x y x y components. Yeah, these are the things that have to agree. But for this to happen, something else has to happen. These. Uh, When, so you have some electric or magnetic field, right? You have some electric or magnetic field incident plus, I'm going to leave a little space, some electric or magnetic field tri uh, reflected is equal to, again, some electric or magnetic field transmitted. This is generally the setup of the boundary condition. But there is this guy. boundary conditions come, again, um, the normal component of H is continuous, the tangential component of E is continuous, the normal component of B is con continuous, and the tangential component of H is continuous. But we have done that only to these guys. 
What about the functional dependence? And that's what I mean. So there, there's that functional dependence. We have just removed that. Well, that's not fair to remove. It can be removed only, and, and it is necessary for it to be removed. First of all, you know, we want it to be true at all times, so there, therefore I cannot have uh, omega incident, omega reflected, omega transmitted. If I had different frequencies, then these won't cancel because the boundary conditions have to be held at all time. Similarly, this has to be, uh, this has to cancel on the entire interface. All this happens when uh, z equal to zero. Isn't that the interface? z equal to zero, the xy plane. That means the same argument will tell you, no, not e, Just like this has to be maintained at all times, this has to be maintained for all values of x and y when z equals 0. Yeah? But these are just constant numbers. So for, those num for this equality to hold, the only way they can hold is this to be true. Be if this is true, then all the functional dependence can be canceled away, and that's when you get this boundary condition. Okay? So the facts we'll need are, for lack of space, uh, the reason I said that is I'm going to erase part of it. The facts we'll need are the four boundary conditions along with the re restriction of this in K. Fine. So let me work on this one for the moment and extract all the information while taking away the boundary conditions. So this is when x equals 0. So that means I get ki um, the x component of that times x plus k vector i y component of that times y should be equal to kr x x plus k r y times y is equal to k t uh, x x plus k t y y correct because when x equals zero the dot product will have only x and y this has to be true for all x and y. Yeah? In particular, this has to be true when y equals 0. What do you get? I'm going to drop this vector symbol. I get kxx is equal to krx. Uh, is equal to kt x. Correct? Similarly, I get ki y, the y component should be transmitted y. So this condition boils down to this. What is 
is K incident, the X component of that. Cosine, right? So it is the magnitude of K, I, times cosine theta I should be equal to magnitude of reflected cosine theta r, correct? Um, so that's equal to k transmitted cosine theta t. What is k? It's omega over n. So velocity is omega over k. Yeah, velocity is omega over k. And that's equal to c over n. Correct? So, sorry. So I can write k to be equal to omega n over c. So this becomes omega over c n1 cosine theta incident equal to omega over c n1 cosine theta r. Because incident and reflected wave happens in the same side. So these two imply this. What does that mean? But theta is restricted to uh, pi over 2 and minus pi over 2. So if cosine theta i equals cosine theta r, what does that mean? Yeah? All right, now let's look at um, this equation. So this implies k I um, if one is cosine, the other one is sine theta i. If all the, the i components, um, sorry, the y components are positive, it's this. I get K R sine theta R. I don't care about reflected anymore because I know theta I equals theta R. So I'm going to write this as K T sine theta T. Yeah? Now again, look at what happens. I get omega over C N1 sine theta i equals now omega over c n2 sine theta t and this implies n1 sine theta i equals n2 sine theta t we know this one. This is, of course, law of reflection. It's not really a law anymore, right? It's been derived. And this is law of refraction. There's a name for it. What is it? Snell's law. So 
So it comes from the fact that at the boundary conditions, uh, at the interface between the two media, all the uh, functional dependence have to cancel off. It doesn't depend on the other details of the actual boundary condition. So it's not very specific to Maxwell's equations per se, just functional dependence, you know, will, so it's a very general way of property. Okay, good. Now, what, what is, so we have Snell's law, um, law of reflection and law of refraction. And now what we, what is left to do is just your usual uh, reflectance and transmittance. No meaning, if you know your initial E, can you tell your electric field in both in the reflected and the transmitted? Can you tell the magnetic field in both the reflected and transmitted? And what can you learn from that? And, and there are several good, good stories here. So I'm going to continue leaving this uh, on, there's one more that I would like to oh, So there's one more thing to be uh, learned uh, from this. Uh, I can choose to set ki y equal to 0, because that's the incident wave. I can, I can choose whether I need to do this or just this. So it's convenient for me to choose that. But if I choose this, what do I mean? What do I get? Immediately I get k reflected y equals 0 and k transmitted y equals 0. That means k incident looks like this. K i x x hat plus K i z z hat K reflected is K r x x hat plus K r z z hat and K transmitted is K transmitted x, x hat plus k transmitted z, z hat. Moreover, we know much more than that, although that is not important. At this particular juncture, this tells us that these three numbers are actually the same. Yeah? But the point is, all 3k are spanned by the x, z plane. Uh, what's what, what do we call K? Wave. K is a wave number. Uh, all, let me do it this way. All Ks uh, well, K is, uh, are in the XZ plane. So when I drew this diagram, it looked like I just drew it perception because it is x, y, but that's not true. If I pick this to be originally along the x-axis, all three of them are in the x-axis. So this is actually a true picture. So if, if I send a beam like this, then I, I, I'll get a beam like this and beam like this. It's in this plane. It doesn't matter what it is. If I set it in the initial plane, the, all the yeah. plane, all of them are going to be in the same plane. That is a big feature in optics. This is called uh, the plane of incidence. In ray optics, when you draw these diagrams, you just assume that everything is in a plane. It's a two-dimensional drawing, but it really comes from all of this. Yeah. Okay. So now, all right, so that, that ends the story. From these two pieces, we have concluded uh, the law of reflection, the law of refraction, and the fact that all propagation vector k's are in the same plane, the plane of incidence. Fine. Now comes the reflection and transmission, and so on and so forth. 
Well, let's see how hard we have to work for that. So this is where my description is different from the textbook, but I think it, it is one that will prove to be helpful. I think it clarifies the conversation um, and also clarifies the result that I was I had mentioned is true. Uh, last time I mentioned that if the um, initial polarization of the electric field is in the XZ plane, the reflected and the transmitted polarization is also in the XZ plane. And I said I cannot justify it at the moment, but uh, just assume it's true. I'll show it on later. Show it later on. Okay. But so let me clarify what I mean. So a little bit of algebra. It, 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 you know, at the end of the day, it's not that difficult. I'm going to call this vector P I polarization of the initial. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm going to call this vector perpendicular. transmitted and, and here's the anomaly look for this and my reflected vector and you might say why why did I choose this uh, there's a method to this this guy as opposed to that guy I'm going to call this P reflected you might say, whoa, that just looks odd. I would, you know, but I can call uh, anything, anything I want. But why did I choose this? Uh, then Ki cross Pi. Can you tell me what Ki cross Pi is? Remember, out of the board is J. Out of the board is the J hat, or or Z. Uh, sorry, not J. Uh, the Y hat. Yeah. I mean that's what it'll be, right? Yep, it'll be Y hat. Or right. But and the the whole point is, I picked my so check it for the reflected. That's why I picked it. Look, if I do this, it's Y, Y. Now from here to here. If I pick this the other way around, I just have to remember that this one doesn't follow that rule. And why do I need K cross P? Don't I need to find uh, the magnetic field? Isn't the magnetic field K cross P? K cross E, well, one over V, K cross E. Therefore, if the electric field is along P, uh, my magnetic field will be along Y. So electric field is in the XY plane, and magnetic field is in the Z plane. That's also an interesting feature. OK, so I'm going to do this. Again, I get to pick my incoming incident electric field. Electric field in, in general would be uh, uh, some E in the PI direction. plus E in the y hat direction. This is true in general. So electric field has to be perpendicular to K. So there are two directions. What are the two directions perpendicular to K? PI and K. Or not by K, I mean y hat. I should have, I should have said Sorry, I should have said J. Yeah? So, P 
i and y direction are, are the two vectors perpendicular to k. The electric field has to be, it's transverse, so it has to be perpendicular to this. So it can have this component and that component. So this is true in general. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah? I was going to do the either one. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was, I was in my head, I had it as one or the other. But yeah, it's one or the other. Yeah. But in, in general, it could be a sum of these yeah. two. But I said first consider. Yeah. So I'm going to consider this case to be zero. What I will show is then all the electric fields will have the y component to be zero. So if electric fields are like people, the plane of incidence is like Las Vegas. What happens in plane of incidence stays in the plane of incidence. So the problem splits into two. Electric field along the plane of incidence is one problem. Electric field perpendicular to the plane of incidence is another problem. They don't mix. Okay. So this is what we will do. In, in your homework or exam problem, this will be zero, and this is what you will do. The same exact calculation. OK, fine. I need lots of, uh, yeah, but now let me add to this. Reflect it. Again, these are complex. But now look at, I'm not, oof, my notation is so clunky. This is the component along the vectors P. This is the component along the vectors uh, along y hat direction. Okay, this is the most general case because none of these vectors can have, this one cannot have a component in the kr direction, and this one cannot have a component in the kt direction because they're transverse. So this is the most general case. So if my story is correct, if my claim is correct, one of the things I have to show, what did I say? What happens with the electric field, what happens in the plane of incidence stays in the plane of incidence. That means I've assumed this. Along the way, I have to show what? These two guys go to? Zero. I have to show that. We assumed that in the previous problem. Fine. Lack of space. I'm just is this uh, all right? So I'm going to do P I Z hat. So let me just draw that a little more. Just going to be overly careful. This is my, oh, this is not exactly 45 degrees. It can be any angle. And this is my K. This is theta I. This is P I. Oh, the, these are. Should 
clarify unit vectors. I, I just pick unit vectors, all of it. Yeah. So sometimes I'll write it as this, sometimes I'll write it as an arrow, but I just pick the unit vector. Okay. Um, and what do you think this is? That means I need the component of this guy in this direction. So I need the perpendicular component, and that is sine theta. No, that's not true. Let me clarify. If this is theta i, well, it, it is sine theta, but it depends on which one. That is theta i, and this is 90. So the angle is uh, from here to here, it is uh, uh, 90 plus theta. Correct? And this is my z axis. So what, when I write this guy, what do I mean? I need, to, I need to make it a lot bigger the first time around on the board. So this is. weird z axis and when I say pi dot z I literally mean this is the component that I'm looking for. Pi the z component of that. So it is so this angle is 90 degrees so this is cosine uh, magnitude of this is 1 Magnitude of this is 1, so cosine of the angle, cosine of 90 plus theta i. And that is simply minus sine theta i. Cosine of 90 plus theta is minus sine theta. Yeah? It is minus because z axis points that way and pi points that way, so it's going to be minus. But it comes directly from the trigger. Yeah. It's just cosine of that. So you can find this all you want. You will get this to be cosine theta i. So I'm just going to write out all the dot products, huh? And I'm not going to draw the diagram for each and every one of them. So recall, I mean, note that I've shown this in a similar way. Um, P R dot Z hat is equals minus sine theta R. P R dot x hat, because I'm worried about z and x and that alone, it's minus cosine theta r. These are not fundamentally very important, but it's just that we'll be using these results on a regular basis. And finally, and these are these two I would like for you to verify, p transmitted z hat equals cosine 90, oh, I'm writing the final result minus sine theta t and p t dot x hat is cosine theta t. Yeah? Okay. Now, I'm going to compute the magnetic field to these guys. Because for every, for the incident reflected and transmitted beam, there's going to be a magnetic field.
So the B, it's a good thing that we start here because this is the only thing that is not uh, zero. So I get it to be one over V1. K incident cross E I, and that I get it to be, it's very easy now. So this is E P I over V1. Because K cross E, E is along P. And K cross P is Y. So we get these Y. That, that's why these, these P's were chosen. So that, that final result works out in a very elegant way. Uh, BR is a little longer. And uh, reflected and transmitted, they look about the same. But the, why is it longer? I'm going to get this result. But then I'm also going to get this too. So let me write both of them. And so this part is easy. This part is easy. It's going to be uh, E P R over V1 J hat. Right? Just, just like this, it's going to be that. Because it's the same medium reflected. Now I have to be careful. I have. E R Y over V1 and then K reflected cross Y hat. And that is going to be E P R over V1 J L. Y hat. What is KR cross Y? Minus PR. KR. Yeah, minus PR, yeah. Yep, minus PR. So there's the minus. Minus E. Um, RY dot V1. This is the reflected. I'm going to box all of these guys because this distinguishes the calculation part to the calculated part. Not that these are fundamental equations, so to speak. speak I'm just bringing in attention. Okay? Just like the reflected B. In transmitted B, I'm going to get two terms. The only difference is V1 will be replaced with V2. And V transmitted is equal to E transmitted component V2 J hat minus E transmitted the J component over V2 yeah, just like this minus I get a minus over here so I have all the electric field components and all the magnetic field components These are my three electric field, and, and I erase that B1, uh, B, B incident. I have the three magnetic fields. Now I have to apply boundary conditions. Okay, let me see how many boundary conditions can I apply today. I think the setup is the difficult part. Why don't I? Uh, stop here and finish the problem tomorrow 
and upload it as one video. It might be a slightly long video, but instead of calling it A and B, I just upload it as one video. I'm editing this one anyway. Mm -hmm.